Hey ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be a follow-up to my part one of what if Naruto was a seal master, so obviously this is part two. Now, like I said in the last video, there's no like goal or anything like that, but I just figured I should probably finish a series every once in a while, considering, you know, before yesterday I hadn't uploaded in like the past, uh, like two months or so. So I figured I should probably do something, you know, like that if I'm going to be active again, which I plan to. We'll see how it goes, but I plan to be uploading daily, at least for a little bit, or I'm gonna try to, but I'll upload definitely more often than I used to, at the very least. So anyway, let's just jump right in where we left off, which was the ending of the actual bell test. So they ended up winning because they actually had a really good strategy with their teamwork, and with that happening, they move on to all of their D rank missions, which are obviously very boring because, you know, that's what they are taking little old ladies across the street, trying to get that cat. They do many of these, and with Naruto being a seal master, they'd actually be able to get through, you know, more of them and faster. Meaning that they actually do get enough D-belt, you know, whatever's under their belt in order to do a higher ranking mission by the time that, you know, Tazuna would come around and like be like that. This Hiruzen was already thinking about it and decides to give them the mission without them even having to, you know, ask about it or say anything. So with this happening, they continue on going, you know, through like the little like paperwork and whatever else is along with, you know, actually going on a mission and then they soon leave the village, meeting up at the gate with Tazuna. So with this happening, the Land of Waves arc would begin. So with this, they begin walking, you know, they're going along the pathway, they've been walking for a few hours now and suddenly something is really strange. It hasn't rained in days, and there's a puddle on the ground. Naruto, with his ability to be able to, like, you know, sense chakra and stuff like that, while it is, you know, limited, he can still do it, he finds out that this puddle is actually just a genjutsu, which is concealing two human bodies. Naruto realizes this and gestures to Kakashi, who, you know, also notices it because he did the original and is really impressed he didn't know that he had any sort of sensory or any kind of abilities like that he had no idea so with this they continue walking forward as if nothing is happening and the second the two brothers jump out naruto and kakashi both take one out naruto releasing a little bit of his gravity seal and just completely smashing him against a rock and he gets knocked out so with this, they begin moving on, and Naruto Ash actually asks something. To, to be able to uh, turn in bounties in the bingo book, do they just, even if you bring them alive, do they just kill them when they get there, or do they actually imprison them? Kakashi looks at Naruto when he says this, and explains it in a way that Naruto would better understand it at his age. Is sometimes they are killed when they get into the village also sometimes they are not it more so depends on their threat that you know decides whether or not they're going to be killed or not not necessarily the actual bounty itself but the danger of the threat naruto begins comprehending what this actually means and then realizes so kakashi basically just told me a roundabout way of saying that they just kind of kill them even if they bring them alive because obviously pretty much all ninja would be considered a dangerous threat because you know that's kind of like how it works that's a thing naruto realizes this and just nods to kakashi before he then takes out the scroll that he has and seals the two bodies inside of it kakashi is actually very surprised by this he thought he was going to have to have like his summons come out and take it, take them back to the village or something of that sort but naruto just sealed them and then he you know, puts the seal back inside, or like the scroll back inside of his backpack and just continues walking along. Kakashi and the rest of his team would soon follow him, with Tazuna now realizing that Naruto isn't actually that weak. Maybe he's strong? Oh my god, <laughs> who would have thunk it? So anyway, they continue walking, and after a few minutes of walking, Ino actually walks up to Naruto, because remember, she's on Team 7 along with Sasuke and Naruto. So, Ino, who has been interested in Naruto for quite a long time, and now Naruto's finally at least a little bit starting to talk to her a bit more, because he really didn't talk much back when he was in the academy. He's been talking a little bit more now, though. So, with that, she begins talking to Naruto, trying to get him to open up about more stuff, and 
Naruto actually does this. He begins talking with her and he pretty much def like lowers all of his like defensive barriers that he would have when normally talking to people just because he trusts Ino now. Now, you may be wondering what exactly the reason is that Naruto wouldn't trust people. It's because he knows that he is the Nine-Tailed Jinshuriki, and that's why everybody hates him. So, he has a hard time trusting whether or not somebody, you know, would just try to kill him by getting on his good side. He has to decide, you know, for himself. And for Ino, he decided that, no, she was actually a good person. And... They begin talking a bit more, and Naruto, like I said, was revealing a bit more about himself, and they eventually got to the topic of, you know, training. And Naruto explains pretty much what he does. At least nowadays, he's more focused on the actual, like, taijutsu side of things. He's been able to increase his gravity seals, like, even more, along with the fact that his more adult-like body is coming in, meaning he'd be able to, you know, train physically a lot harder. But he then explains that most of his time training was just trying to be able to actually be able to control my chakra. Oh, uh, I guess being able to control, uh, let me see, like up to six tails of the nine tails too. And you know, hearing this is absolutely shocked. She doesn't even know what the hell that means. I don't think they even knew that Naruto was the nine tails Jinchuriki at this point. So she's obviously like, uh huh. And she just can like, Pretends it wasn't there, pretends Naruto never said it, and they continue on with their conversation until eventually Ino gets the courage to actually just ask Naruto. When we get back from this mission, you maybe want to go get dinner or something like that? Maybe we can hang out a little bit? Naruto looks at Ino now and he's like, sure, why not? I can take a break from training every once in a while. As this happens, Ino blushes a little bit before, you know, backing off from Naruto, not really talking to him until the thick fog begins to roll in, this obviously being Zabuza. And with this happening, Naruto, you know, having the ability to sense Chakra, sees that Zabuza is standing right in front of him. Naruto knows that this is probably a lot more dangerous of a threat because of how worried Kakashi was about, like, the mist and who it might belong to. Naruto immediately completely undoes his gravity seals and charges forward towards, um, Zabuza. Zabuza, you know, kind of like just standing there, not really expecting to have to do much, is absolutely hurled. He gets sent flying from a punch from Naruto, who is at complete, like, full power. Like, he was not holding back at all. So, this punch, well, let's say it hits him square in, like, his left shoulder. And when he is revealed after, like, all of that and a little bit of the, you know, smoke clears because of the fact that his fog would actually be reducing because he's been weakened at this point, everybody gets a good look at Zabuza. And they see something interesting. What they weren't really expecting to see was his co entire arm, like, around his shoulder area, was completely smashed. He was unable to use that arm entirely, making it much, much harder for him to be able to use Jutsu because he'd be able to do hand signs slower. Now, you can do them with only one, but obviously it would take longer because you can't make, you know, two hand signs at the same time without using two hands. So, with that happening, this is a massive shock for literally everybody there because they were not expecting Naruto to be this strong. Naruto never completely unrestrained himself against Kakashi when they were fighting. He just, you know, was playing around a little bit. Like, he, he was using kind of his full power. It was it, it was interesting. Maybe like 60-70%. But this, this was something like, on a completely different level from what he was showing before. He just effectively one-shot this basically S-rank ninja. And that is <laughs> kind of insane. Kind of crazy. So, with this happening, Zabza is absolutely shocked. He's now looking at the group and he sees who did it to him. A uh, 12 year old what he's you know shocked even further knowing that it wasn't even like kakashi the copy ninja that did it to him and he begins to wonder was this mission a mistake but as he begins thinking this naruto disappears from his vision he wasn't even concentrated at all and naruto just seemingly vanished he then spot or you know senses kind of like, you, you know that like st instinct you get when you know you're about to get fucking killed it's like that he turns his head to see naruto's fist colliding with his face and he knows that this is going to be fatal but something interesting happens right before they connect naruto's hand 
is actually a little bit altered in the course by a few Sinbon needles that were actually thrown at him. These pierce straight into Naruto's hand, but Naruto releases a bit of the Nine Tails Chakra in order to heal it, because, you know, Naruto can do that, because, you know, Seal Master. <laughs> Naruto's cool. Wouldn't it be interesting if Naruto was able to make his own key because he's, like, the seal guy? I, I, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Let me know in the comments below. So, with this actually happening, Naruto would look, look at the new two opponents that are facing him, and he doesn't really know what either of them are capable of, because <laughs> nobody's really had a chance to fight back, except, you know, obviously, Haku threw the Sinbon needles at him. Naruto realizing this is like, whatever, I, I really don't care, I, I kind of just have to try here. He once again charges towards Zabuza, this time he is really, he wants him gone because he knows that if the other one, you know, it'd be a lot harder to fight two on one than one on one. So Naruto immediately charges towards Zabuza and Haku's off guard at this point. Now. Naruto doesn't necessarily go for the kill here. Remember that talk he had with Kakashi earlier in this episode? He thinks that he might be able to fight that, to change that. Maybe there, there's some sort of good within them. So Naruto goes for not a full power, but like, you know, 60% gut punch to, to Zabuza, and that actually completely knocks him out as he falls down into the water, which they're on the water because Naruto can also water walk here. So, with that, Haku is, you know, understandably very angry at this, as he immediately charges Naruto, but he's really easy to read. He's enraged and just kind of like, you know, doing direct attacks. Naruto dodges out of the way and begins writing down a series of, le you know, random symbols on his hand. Or not random, but, you know, random to us on his hand. Begins writing them on his hand as he places it out and blocks Haku. With this happening, that seal inevitably gets placed on him, and what are the effects of it? Well, it's a gravity seal. Haku immediately drops to the ground. He was not expecting this, and this amount of weight is absolutely insane. Just because his physical ability is still less than Naruto, but probably able to handle the seals and be able to move, at least like to a physical degree, the absolute shock of that weight just coming down on him was enough to drop him to his knees. He, f you know, falls down and takes a few seconds to gain his bearings, but that is too long. With a neck chop, Naruto too knocks out Haku as he get, you know, gets dropped down into the water, and Naruto drags their two bodies back to Kakashi, who's still kind of sitting on the shoreline like, oh, oh, what, what is this kid? Why is he, why is he able to do that? Why is he so strong? Like, yeah, he wasn't like, he was trying though, that's the thing, and he just easily took those two out without taking literally any damage. Kakashi is shocked by this, as Naruto puts the two bodies there, or not bodies, they're still alive, and they seal them inside of, you know, Naruto's scroll once again. So, they go down the path a little bit farther, eventually reaching Tazuna's house. They do rest for the night, but move along to the bridge in the next day, because, you know, Kakashi never had to take out a Sharingan, Naruto obviously wouldn't be tired from such a simple use of his abilities, and they can just move on, because nobody's tired. So, they go over there, and they, you know, get the br bridge done rather quickly. But... As most of you would expect, Gato would inevitably arrive. With this happening, Naruto decides he's gonna show off a little bit. Multi Shadow Clone Jutsu, Naruto says, as hundreds, maybe even a thousand clones, come out onto the bridge, massively outnumbering everybody there, along with the fact that their strength is way above their own. Now, at this, they all retreat. Everybody except Gato, still thinking that ninja aren't even that strong anyway, like, what's the big deal here, they're just, they're, they're, they're just there, like, they haven't moved, they haven't done anything, they're just, they're illusions, like, come on. <laughs> he begins walking forward, and all of the clones at once take a kunai out of their pouch and throw it towards Gato, and he has zero chance of dodging this. It's like more than a thousand kunai at once being thrown at him. He's he's just fucked. 
<laughs> so he drops to the ground completely dead like literally in a pool of his own blood and they soon seal his body away too and soon enough return back to the village once they do return to the village they report to the hokage immediately and explain to him that this mission was not c rank but it was more likely a b or maybe a, or maybe a rank mission probably a because of the fact that there's an s rank ninja that was there so with this he increases their pay and then naruto steps forward with kakashi and they split the bounty of the two chunin brothers and naruto takes the bounty of gato because he is the one who completely did that now naruto with a lot of money also tells the hokage one more thing he brought back some more ninja but these ones they're alive now here isn't would be like oh, oh that that's completely fine their bounties say dead or alive and you know that is completely fine by me now naruto Naruto's attitude would change pretty drastically here. He looks at Hiruzen and tells him, No, I want them to remain alive. And I also want them to maybe be considered Leaf Shinobi. Now, Hiruzen hearing this kind of just laughs at Naruto because that was so outrageous, so ridiculous, because nothing like that has really ever been done, especially with, like, literal enemies of the Leaf. But Naruto, basically, you know, giving him his word, tells them that they will be valuable assets and he personally will attend to them. So with this happening, Hiruzen decides to allow Naruto, assigning him his own, like, personal guard of Anbu for when he actually inevitably does release them. But Naruto has one more idea first. He remembers that there is one more thing that he has to do. And this is going to date with Eno. So they both meet. And they inevitably, of course, because, you know, that, that's Naruto's favorite place, they go to Ichiraku's ramen shop, where they begin talking and, you know, actually bonding for pretty much the first time, unless you count, like, their little talk I think, when they were, you know, on their way to rebuild the bridge. But this is their first time that they're actually, like, genuinely talking to each other about, like, personal interests and different things like that. And at the end of it, remember, they're only, like, 13 at this point, so they're not really going to be doing anything. Naruto actually leans in and hugs Ina, which, you know, shocks the ever-living hell out of her. And she's, you know, like, uh, 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 okay. And she begins running off, her head literally like a tomato at this point. Naruto just kind of snickers to himself a little bit. He He's smarter. He picks up on what's happening, and he's just kind of laughing to himself. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm a player now. Let's go. So Naruto would then once again return to the Hokage and announce that he was ready for his next mission, which was obviously to, you know, be able to change Zabuza and Haku. So Naruto, along with his personal Anbu, go to a pretty outskirts in the village area like m probably about a mile away from the main village placing the seal on the ground with naruto slamming his hand against it as they are removed from it standing in front of naruto still gravely injured but that is where i am going to be leaving this part off so i will see you guys in the next part sorry for the kind of cliffhanger there and i'll see you in the next video